today I'm going to make the chemical thalamide, which I plan to use to synthesize some azo dyes as well as the artificial sugar saccharin. I'm also going to use some of it to synthesize anthranilic acid, which I need to make methyl red. Making thalamide though is pretty easy, and to get started all I do is grind together 10 grams of phthalic anhydride and 2 grams of urea in a mortar and pestle. I then transfer this to a small Erlenmeyer flask that's been suspended in an oil bath set to 140 degrees celsius. This will eventually melt the thalamide, and then the two can start reacting. The reason the two are able to react is that the carbonyl group on the anhydride is extremely electrophilic. This carbonyl is attacked by the fairly nucleophilic nitrogen in the urea, which sets off a series of proton and electron transfers. This results in a thalamide with an extra hydrogen as well as a carbamide ion. This carbamide ion reacts with the extra hydrogen and then breaks apart into carbon dioxide and ammonia gas, which float away. The result is pretty much pure thalamide, which puffs up when it's done. At that point I remove the Erlenmeyer flask from the oil bath and allow it to cool for a while. Once it's all cooled down, I remove the thalamide from my Erlenmeyer flask by squirting in some distilled water and then breaking apart the mass with a glass stir rod. I then pass it through vacuum filtration to collect my thalamide, and since thalamide is virtually completely insoluble in water, I really shouldn't lose any product here. Now, I used a small excess of urea to make sure that all the phthalic anhydride reacted to thalamide, which means that I'm going to have a slight urea contamination here. Urea is extremely soluble in water, so a water rinse should be fine, but I want pretty crystals, so I'm going to do a recrystallization in ethanol. To do this, I simply dissolve my thalamide in a minimal amount of hot ethanol. This took a little while, as I didn't really realize how insoluble thalamide is in ethanol, and I kept having to add more. Regardless, once the thalamide completely dissolved and the solution was clear, I took it off the heat and allowed it to cool for a little while. This allowed the pure thalamide to quickly crystallize out, and eventually I put it on an ice bath to make sure I got all of it. I think the crystals that formed were really pretty, but again, I don't really think this step is necessary, as the product was probably already very pure. This step also wouldn't separate out unreacted thalic anhydride, which is why using a small excess of urea at the beginning was important. Anyway, once my recrystallization is complete, I pass my product through vacuum filtration and then dry it overnight under vacuum desiccation. The final result was exactly 8 grams of these very nice looking thalamide crystals, which represents an 81% yield. The initial yield was probably a good deal higher, and as usual I probably lost most of my product in the recrystallization. Regardless, I hope you found this interesting, and if you'd like to see more science, consider giving me a follow.